And so I just was like, I'm just going to make the character a kid like I was, you know. And, and this is the book for the kids like me who would read The Secret Garden or read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and none of the characters would look like them or have their family. Hi, my name is Michelle Chalfoon, and I wrote The Treasure of Maria Mamoun. Could you talk a little bit about your family background and history? Um, my dad, Salim Shalfoun, was born and raised in Beirut, Lebanon, and he came to the U.S. in um, his 20s, in 1965. He met my mom, who was the daughter of German immigrants, in Paris. They were both students in Paris, and they fell in love, and she followed him back to Beirut, and they got married there, and then they settled in New York. They came to the U.S. and um, so I was born in the U.S. I was born in the Bronx. I was baptized at Our Lady of Lebanon in Brooklyn Heights, just like the main character. Um, just like the main character, she has one Lebanese parent and one non-Lebanese parent. Um, though I changed it up a little bit in the book. And uh, yeah, she was um, the only. Arab American in her community and our family too. We were the only Arab Americans in our community. We would um, go to Atlantic Avenue to get our groceries because this was back in the day when you had to specialty shop for tahini. Right, and, you know, right. that wasn't everywhere. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, you had to make your own lebni. You had to put the yogurt in the cheesecloth and have it drip into the sink wow. because you couldn't buy the tub of lebni. Uh -huh. Now, right. it's totally easy, but. Um, go to Whole Foods sometimes. Yeah, and uh, so. The character in the book and I have some similarities, except um, there's a bit of a time shift. You know, I was born in 1966, and so my childhood was the 70s, 80s. This is a contemporary book. Mm -hmm. Originally, I was just writing a generic character who, as a result, would probably have read as just white American child. Right. And my daughter, my my children are. Uh, they came into the family through adoption. Um, they were born in Guatemala. And my daughter came home from school one day and she said, Mom, why is it that the white characters get to have adventures? But if it's a person of color, it's always about that. And I said, well, what do you mean? And she said, well, if they're Mexican, they're always getting deported or running for the border. And if they're Jewish, it's always the Holocaust. And, you know, why don't kids of color get to like be magic or go through wardrobes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I was completely guilty of doing that, of just, you know, homogenizing my character because I thought there would be greater readership. Or I don't even know what it was. I think it might be for a lot of like various uncomfortable reasons. Um, and I was like, why? why am I'm not doing that anymore. I'm over it. And so I just was like, I'm just going to make the character a kid like I was, you know? And, and this is the book for the kids like me who would read The Secret Garden or read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and none of the characters would look like them or have their family. I'm just going to write that book now. And mm -hmm. so I changed it at that point. Okay. And why do you think that's like... Do you think that's an important thing for, for children to see those kind of diversity in characters? I think it is. I think it is important. I think um, I think I grew up with a real sense of like, your heritage is at home, and in the outside world, you're not that. And you don't admit to it, and you never say it, or whatever. So I think um, that was reinforced by everything that I read. There were no Arabs or Arab Americans anywhere unless they had a kafia on and they were a terrorist. Right. And that was it. That was the only option. The other possibility was a belly dancer, like a hypersexualized belly dancer. Mm -hmm. And those were the Arabs. And that was it. And so um, to have a character who's just, yeah, she's Arab American and that's not really the point. <laughs> she's still a, a human being and She's not a belly dancer and she's not a terrorist. She's a kid. Do you have any advice for like aspiring authors who want to write young adult fiction? Um, the most important thing is to just finish. Mm -hmm. I think so many, so many people have great ideas. They get three quarters of the way through and then either because of fear or just time constraints, you can't finish. 
And I mean, that took me five years from beginning to being in covers of the book. And, um, and it was just because I, uh, there would be times when I could not write for a really long time. But if you just kept coming back, and I think a lot of people don't keep coming back, and then when it's done, be brave enough to put it out there.